My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review of All of Us Are Dead Season 1 and this will be a spoiler filled review so if you haven't seen it, go and watch it then come back and watch my review because I will be going in depth. Now this is a show that I've heard great things about. Lots of people are saying that it's a great zombie TV show. So I'm just like, okay, let's give it a shot. And I have to say that I did not find this show to be good at all. Let's begin talking about the plot. And there's two key elements of the plot. There's the stuff within the school and outside the school. But let's begin talking about the stuff within the school and this is the stuff that should have really stood out to me because this show's entire gimmick is that it's a zombie show set in a school but it almost never utilizes the setting. There's like one scene where there's two characters fighting each other on a bunch of bookcases in the library and that's the one moment to me where the show really came alive and took advantage of its setting. But that's the exception, not the rule. More often than not, they just don't utilize it. They just hide in one room from the next. This show could have taken place in a school, in a science exhibit, in a government building. It really could have taken place anywhere. And I just wish they'd utilize the setting a bit more. This show is just a non-stop series of these characters hiding in one room for a long period of time. And then they eventually make their way to a different room well, they then hide for a very long period of time. They then make their way to another room. Well, they then hide for a very long period of time. And you're just like, oh my goodness, just get going. And there's moments where they get attacked by zombies. But all those moments have are just these zombies coming at them. And they have some sort of wall blocking them from the zombies. And the zombies trying to get by, but they're holding up the wall and they eventually make their way out of that situation. Just rinse and repeat time and time again. You've got the scene where they're in that one room, where they've got the wall made up of all the tables and chairs, stopping the zombies from coming in. They then run away, they're on the staircase, they're stopping the zombies from reaching them through the blanket or whatever. They're in the gym and they're stopping them from getting to them by using all the different gym equipment. It's just the same stuff, wins and repeats throughout the entire show. And because of that, this show did absolutely nothing for me. If you've seen three episodes, then you've seen everything that this show has to offer. Awful. But the worst part of the show is actually everything outside the school because this stuff couldn't have been more cliche. Like I said, the show's gimmick is that it's a zombie show inside the school. And even though that doesn't utilize the setting, all of this stuff just feels like the most cliche generic zombie stuff that we've seen time and time again. This show should have focused on the kids in the school and that's it. Because I just couldn't care less about any of these characters outside the school. Like just scrap it entirely. Also I get the feeling that this show is trying to subvert expectations with who lives, who dies, does this character get redemption or not. But just about every route they took I found to be completely unsatisfying. I love it when movies and shows subvert expectations, but you have to do it with purpose. Subverting expectations is good, unsatisfying narratives is bad. Now let's talk about the characters, and there is a whole bunch of characters, but most of them didn't stand out to me in any way, so I'm just going to talk about the characters that I actually have things to say about, starting with Cheong Sein. And he is the character that you do start to care for the most. You view him as an underdog and that does really work. And the relationship between him and Onja does actually have some emotional moments. That said though, his fate really didn't sit right with me. He loses his eye and then dies in, in an explosion. So why make him lose the eye if you're just going to kill him off? Like, if he lived, it would be way more effective. Like, the bully's big revenge thing was about taking his eye. Not about biting him, not about killing him, but about taking his eye. And he succeeds in that goal. And I'm just like, okay, that is a great moment. But then by immediately killing them both off, you neither give the villain the satisfaction or Cheung Sen the whole of what's happened to him. He could have lost his eye and then defeated the bully, and then that would have been both haunting and satisfying story-wise. And speaking of the bully, whose name I'm going to try to pronounce is Yoon 
draw name. I like this whole idea of this bad guy who turns fearless as he turns into a monster. And I love the idea of him coming back time and time again. But the problem with that is that there's no escalation or progression. They get into a fight. He loses. He gets knocked out a window or something. And then he comes back. Wins and repeat. Wins and repeat. If you're going to do something like that, you need something to make us feel like the story is progressing in some way. And the best way to go about that is to have maybe make him look worse and worse each time he comes back. Like the first time he looks like a human, but the next time like his arm is all messed up and it's like a hundred times worse. And then slowly like throughout the show he turns more mutated or more into this bigger monster. And I think that would have been a brilliant impactful way of handling this character because the way they handle him he just ends up feeling like a one note character a one note threat and it just got done to death and i don't really like the fact that they don't really explain the half zombie thing like how does that even work he got bitten but he doesn't turn into a zombie because why I wish there was some sort of explanation or attempt to explain it because then we've also got the character namwa who also gets turned into a half zombie and I'm just like why does she turn into a half zombie too? Like what are the rules? Why is it just these two people who are turning into these half zombies? Like there's gotta be some kind of rule or consistency because then it just feels like anyone who gets bitten could have turned into a half zombie. By doing it in this half-assed sloppy manner, you really do with the story of lots of potential impact it could have. And I wish there was more discussions of this character of what happens if they get out of, out of the school where they allow this person into society even though she's a half zombie. Or if they just talked about what's happened to her. Like take advantage of the fact that she's part monster. But they do it in the most minimalistic ineffective manner. Like there's one scene where the guy that she likes kisses her. And I was just thinking, wouldn't it be terrifying if after he kisses her, he starts turning into a zombie because she's half zombie? Like, that would have been a great way to utilize her. Or maybe she should have turned bad and they're forced to kill her eventually. Or maybe she's a character who is really upset about what happened to her dad. That the fact that she thinks her dad is dead. And now she is stuck living forever with that pain. That would have been a great way to explore her character. Because every way they just go about her just feels like wasted potential. And the last scene in this show was her on the rooftop being like, yeah, there's a bunch of us. It was just hilariously bad. Then we've got Na Leon, who is the girl in the pink shredder. And I think that one story beat of her turning the guy at the very start of this show was terrifying. It was a horrendous action of hers that just revealed how awful she was. And I'm just thinking the entire time, why would you separate her from everyone else? Like you could have used her to create tension within the group. So everyone together isn't buddy buddy. That would have been really great. Like it seems later on, like they would have given her the redemptive arc. But then nope, she just ends up getting killed off and it's very unsatisfying. And I'm not even sure if I would have been okay with that. But at least you would have given the character something to do. But she tones that one guy reveals how awful of a person she is, and then she just ends up doing nothing for the rest of the show, so it would have been more impactful if they're like, why did you do that to him? He was my friend, and then have him like push her out the window or push her into the hallway to get eaten up, because she does that horrendous act, and then just nothing. So that was yet another wasted character, and every other character was just very bland and forgettable and didn't impact me in any way. You know, I couldn't tell you anything about any of them like there was this group in the school there was the cops with the baby the parents the two kids on the rooftop and just none of them impact me in any way and there's just way too many characters you make the story feel just like a mess you gotta have focus most of these characters within the school group just stand around and do nothing like there's one point where the main character Cheong Sang gets bitten and they all just stand there and do nothing. Like, the characters just end up feeling completely useless. And I think it was a bafflingly awful decision to have the teacher separate from the group of students. Because that would have been a nice, different character to have with that group. Would have added a nice dynamic. 
but no, they don't do that. The writing in this show I did find to be really bad for the most part. That said, I do love the fact that they actually cause the zombies zombies. I can't think of the last movie that did that. Like, it feels like they're purposely trying to avoid it now, but the fact that they called them zombies, I really liked. And just the fact that they referenced uh, Train to Busan and referenced other movies, I really enjoyed. But my goodness, this show has some awful exposition. There's this one character who's just like to this other character. You were a substitute teacher, but now you're a four times teacher. It's just like, wow, um, that's uh, one way to get the point across. Oh, this guy sees that this zombie was hit by an arrow, and he's just like, my sister had a born arrow competition today. Like, couldn't you have done some other way to communicate that point? It's just very lazy. Now, I do like that one scene where there's this mission squad that comes to the school to get some information, and how they're forced to leave them on the school. They're not able to rescue them. And I like that story beat, because it just adds to the hopelessness that the characters feel. But that said, it makes no sense to me why they wouldn't take them there on the rooftop because there's asymptomatic people. But then at the very end of the show, when they're escaping, they're like, oh yes, now we can take you, come on in. Like, really? What was the logic? What was the consistency? Because as far as I'm concerned, there is none. Uh, there's a few really dumb moments, like there's one point where they're outside the school and Chiang San, I think it was, sees his mom as a zombie. And it's just like, oh, okay, this just seems really forced. Like, maybe if they went to her restaurant and they saw her, that would have worked. But her at the school, I didn't buy. And then at one point, uh, one of their dads comes and saves them. And then I'm just like, oh, well, if he's saving them, I guarantee you that he's going to get bitten right away because this show doesn't want any change in the group's dynamic and sure enough that happened and it's just filled with predictable meaningless tropes. Now let's also talk about the survival aspect of this show because this is something that drove me nuts because we never see the characters drink water or eat food once as far as I'm concerned and as a result they should slow down or they should try to go on missions to get food and water that they desperately need to survive. Like, you could have made this the essential plot progression. Like, it's a ticking clock. You know? Like, we need food. Now. And typically, I don't watch movies like, okay, come on, this is just ridiculous. Ethan Hunt is hanging on the outside of this helicopter and he hasn't peed once. Like, I don't buy this. No, I don't typically nitpick movies or shows like this. The only reason why I'm doing it with this show is that they made it a deliberate point to bring it up. The characters themselves talk about how desperately they need food and water. They brought it up, not me. So I just want them to follow through with what they already brought up. Like there's one moment where they think there might be food or water in this one room and they try opening the door and they, they can't get it open, they just give up. And I'm just like, you could legitimately die. Like, try harder. It just drove me nuts. Uh, the directing in the show is fine. There is some cool shots. Like, there's this one POV shot where the squad enters the school, which I really liked. And there's one scene very early on, and this is actually the best scene in this entire season. It's when the police get a call that they're getting attacked by zombies, and the guy's just like, really? Okay. Hangs up, and he's just like, oh, kids these days. And then someone else gets a call about zombies. And then someone else, and then someone else. And soon, they're getting a ton of calls about zombies. And I'm just like, that was great building in that scene. That was great tension. That was fantastic. And the show is visually well shot. Uh, I didn't like the music in it. I think the music sounded way too playful. Like, there were zombies in the school, so they were trying to give it like a playful sound but it didn't work to me at all. But I also do find this show to be incredibly slow and just lacking in any bit of energy. The whole aspects of this show aren't really all that impressive. I do like the crunching sound of the zombies. Like they'll move around it's like crunch 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 crunch. I really like that. I do wish it was bloodier and more intense because almost everything going on is typical zombie stuff. It doesn't elevate the subgenre in any significant way. It's very one note in its approach to the whole, and, and I would have liked it if they explored the whole idea that there's these characters who can't die, 
who are just breaking more and more. Like, the Bully character at one point, like, breaks his hand pretty good. And it's just like, you now have a broken hand forever. Like, I, I w it would have been cool to explore that. Kind of like in a reanimator kind of way. Or even if you had mutations going on so you could have body hole. That would have been really great. But I think the actual biggest missed opportunity of this show is that they messed up by having fast zombies. Fast zombies are in almost every zombie movie and show nowadays, and I think that was the absolute wrong approach here. The fact that these are kids in a school, to give them more of a chance, having slow zombies would have done that. You know, if they're getting chased, and you're just like, okay, I don't buy that they'd be able to outrun these fast zombies, but you make them slow zombies, and I think it would be a lot more effective. You could have made this show feel like Resident Evil 2, like the video game. Just this constant hopelessness, just running through these hallways, trying to make it, like that would have been really amazing. And all you'd have to do is make the zombies slow zombies, just the That would have been great, and it's something we don't get anymore these days. So I think that would have been a really great idea, but my biggest issue with this show is that it should have been two hours long. It should have been a two hour long movie. This doesn't have nearly the amount of depth to be 12 freaking hours long. It just doesn't. The characters aren't compelling enough. The story isn't compelling enough to own this length. And there's way too many characters. Most are completely unneeded. The show should have stayed focused on the main group. And the characters hide in a room for an episode or two and then run to the next room. When there's actual zombies attacking them, they just hold them back using objects. It's the same freaking thing throughout. It's a very one-note show with no actual progression or evolving nature of the story. So you could easily cut lots of the show off because honestly, it's a very slow and boring show. Most of the show is just the same characters talking about the same stuff. Like, I just feel like this could have easily been a two hour long movie. Like just be rapid pace, keep it moving, keep it intense, keep it thrilling. And just, I think it could have been a really effective movie at that. But at, at a show, 12 episodes long, each being an hour long, this show isn't just way over long. It's absolute excessive in it. The characters talk way too long for uninteresting stuff. Though there is a bunch of easy material to cut off of this show. You can still have those moments where characters breathe. But if I look at a show like this, and look at a movie like... 28 Days Later, 28 Days Later has more depth than this show. And it's two hours long. You could have easily done it. There's just, I just can't wrap my head around the fact that this is a 12 hour long show when it didn't need it to be at all. At best, it could have been six hours. But realistically, it could have easily been a two hour long movie. Also, I did find the whole, are they infected on our trope was really overdone here. Because it's a zombie saying, well, oh, are you bitten? Are you not bitten? And how that creates paranoia. You know, it's going to be in almost every zombie movie. But this show does it a few too many times. I also thought the characters' plans were always stupid. You'd think that they have something a bit more clever that they came up with. But that's never the case. The cliffhangers in this show I found to be cheap and lazy. The inciting incident lacks any better weight. They try to make you feel sympathetic for the guy who started this virus, but you don't at any point. Most deaths or sacrifices, not all, but most, like any bit of weight as they're overdone. Like there was actually one moment with the dad, and I'm just like, really? Another sacrifice? I mean, we just had one like five minutes ago. There's no clear rules in what's established here. And we spent so much time with these characters, and I did end up caring for Ching San and Unja, but that's it. To spend so much time with all these characters and for them to be as one note and for me to care as little for them as I do, that's a failure. The plot is very one note. It lacks any bit of thematic depth. You know, you could have explored uh, the fact that these kids are losing their innocence and explore hopelessness and just lots of human emotions, but the show really fails to do so. You had the time and there's no excuse for this show to be as underwhelming and as empty as it is. It has its moments, but it's far from good. So I'm going to go ahead and give All of Us Are Dead Season 1 a 3 out of 10. Okay, have you seen All of Us Are Dead? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon, and Gavin out.